Let's talk about chiral perspective with fissure projections. So for the fissure projection, the reason they're used is to quickly identify chiral center configuration and then to quickly identify meso compounds if there's more than one chiral center present. So it's a symmetry um, simplification, but we've got to know what these crossbars mean at each chiral center. Typically, they're arranged starting with the carbon-1 of a parent chain being at the top. doesn't have to be that way, but that's pretty typical. And then we'd number 2, 3, and 4. So we've got some isomer here of 2-chlorobutane, and we've got to figure out which one we have, R or S. Because we don't have a planar structure, we have to have some sort of perspective when we have a chiral center such as what we've got here. So what does a Fisher projection mean? It means the horizontal bonds are coming at us, the vertical bonds are going away from us. So we can just rewrite everything. And we can actually just rewrite it as the labels of priority. So here, chlorine's got a higher atomic number than carbon. Hydrogen's got a less atomic number than all of them. And connected to that chiral center, we have two carbons. One's connected to, two, to another carbon. One's connected to only hydrogen. So we get our one through four rank. At this point, we can just transfer that ranking over to our configuration that we've drawn. Horizontal bonds at us, vertical bonds away. And we see that we've got group 4 coming at us. So we could just say, well, since group 4 is supposed to be going away from us, we can just take the opposite here. It looks like it's counterclockwise, 1, 2 to 3. But because we're looking at, at group 4 from the wrong direction, it's actually going to be not S but R. We'll take the opposite. Because group 4 is coming at us here. Okay, So this is an R configuration. And so if we wanted to translate the R configuration into a perspective, what we could do is just draw the parent chain after we found R and S. We want it to be R. Um, and then we'll guess and check. So we just start by saying, okay, what if it's here? And we can say one, two, three, group four is back. That's an R for sure. But if we'd had the dashed, we could just say, oh, we're wrong. Let's change it to R. So quickly just to get that down on paper. So the fissure we started with is this version. Now we remember if we rotate this around 180 degrees, that's still the same compound. We'd still get the R enantiomer if we drew it in this way. There's several other ways we could draw it, um, but quickly we can get to it that way. Now what if we have a Fisher projection that has more than one chiral center, and we have a skeletal structure that may not be drawn in exactly the way we need to look at it for the Newman projection. So our first goal is if we're starting with carbon-1 at the top, we've got to identify carbon-1. Well, by nomenclature, we can lower bromine versus chlorine. We're going to get a 1, 2, 3, or excuse me, a 2, 3, 4 substituted something. Um, and because we can put a lower number on bromine, we put the B before C alphabetically, and we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's the first step. And then we've got to figure out where's our eyeball at. Uh, we want the bromine and hydrogen of this chiral center to be coming at our eyes and so our eyeball would be up here with carbon one above our heads here so we're looking at it now some people are going to easily be able to just say oh look that's I can visualize my eye in that position that means bromine is going to appear to the left of my vision if carbon one is at the top of my vision a lot of people can't do that just from their heads so I'd build a model you don't need to build the whole thing. You just need to build this chiral center, four atoms attached to that carbon two, and arrange it so that you can line it up on the page and then take it and turn it to your eyeball the way the Fisher projection would look. And if we did that, we would see that bromine is on the left. The tricky part about this one is because we're drawn in a staggered configuration, up, down, up, down, up, down, now we've got to look at carbon three with our eyeball below the structure that we have drawn here because now the vertical bonds are away from us here and our horizontal bonds are at us here so we have to change our perspective of how we're looking at this thing alternatively we could redraw our structure 
in a completely eclipsed conformation. That's one thing you'll notice about these fissures is they are all an eclipse conformation. And if we do that, we're going to get this type of arrangement. Then we could have our eyeballs here the entire time and be looking at it as we see. But because of this, bromine's on the right-hand side um, of our perspective. Again, can't see it. Build this chiral center at carbon three, four atoms, number your groups one to four with bromine um, coming at you, looking at the page, then turn the figure to where the horizontal bonds are coming at you, and you will see that bromine is indeed on right-hand side. Okay, this is a practice sport. This is not something we can just listen to videos and learn 100%. You've got to make yourself believe in the perspective that you're seeing. So here we have, um, again, now the bonds that are coming at us are on top of the structure, and so we've got to move our eyes again, and that would put chlorine on the right-hand side. Okay, so whenever we can convince ourselves using a model kit that these two are the same molecule, that's when we're ready to move ahead. So we quickly look at this on the fissure, we see its perspective, and we can also um, translate it into a skeletal, which we can then use to find RNS. So if you're interested, uh, one, two, three, this is an R. Um, one, bromine beats chlorine. One, two, three, four is away from us. So this one again is one, two, three is R. And then um, one, two, three looks like S, but because H is at us, group four is at us, this one's also going to be R as well. So that one turned out to be R.